Jasmine Crockett shuts down Joe Manchin's call for an open primary. Crockett says she stands 10 toes down with Kamala Harris amid reports that Manchin is eyeing a 2024 bid. Representative Jasmine Crockett, Democrat, Texas, emphasized that she's backing Kamala Harris in November, even if lawmakers challenge the vice president's campaign. So this idea of throwing out Joe Manchin and all of all these other people, listen, if you all decide to go any other way, have fun with that, Crockett told MSNBC's Joy Reid on Sunday. But the only person that I will get out there and break my back for and campaign for and believe in who is capable and qualified is Vice President Kamala Harris. Crockett responded to reports that Senator Joe Manchin who registered to become an independent after he left the Democratic Party in May, is considering re-registering as a Democrat and battling Harris for the nomination. <laughs> Manchin, who is not running for re-election and is set to retire for the Senate this year, has backed the idea of, op of an open primary to decide on a Biden replacement. Well, it shouldn't be him. I think that we have a lot of talent on the bench, a lot of good people, Manchin told CNN State of the Union on Sunday prior to the president's announcement. The West Virginia lawmaker went on to name Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, adding that the two Democrats operate with legislatures that are evenly split or completely opposite of their party affiliation, and have brought people together. They haven't decided their state. They haven't made you pick a side and demonize the other side. They have brought people together. This is what an open process would do, he said. He's full of it. He jumped ship. Shapiro endorsed Harris following Biden's announcement, while Bashir stopped short of immediately backing the vice president. The Kentucky governor is set to appear on MSNBC's Morning Joe on Monday. Crockett, <clears throat> who told Reed that she stands 10 toes down with Harris, wrote on X, formerly Twitter, that she's been clear about her endorsement. She's the vice president. She's the second in command. She can and will finish the job, the Texas Democrat wrote on the site formerly known as Twitter. We have to do the work. I don't want another few weeks of not getting to the job of beating MAGA and Project 2025. Right now, I would like to bring in uh, our uh, friend and one of the favorites uh, that people love to watch on this here network, Jasmine Crockett, Congresswoman from the great state of Texas. Uh, and Congresswoman, welcome. And I understand you've just gotten off of two big calls. There was the big win with black women call, which lots of people are now talking about, which busted its capacity. Uh, so black women uniting for, uh, for Vice President Harris, but also with the vice president. Do you want to tell us anything about that call with the vice president? <laughs> So just so that everyone is clear, I was never one of those leaky people. So no, I have nothing to say. about my phone call with the vice president, um, other than what I'm sure the American people already know, which is that I stand 10 toes down. with Vice President Kamala Harris to become the next president of the United States. Um, I made it very clear very early. If Joe is out, there is only one person that I will be wo working for. So this idea of throwing out Joe Manchin and all these other people, listen, if y'all decide to go any other way, have fun with that. But the only person that I will get out there and break my back for and campaign for and believe in who is capable and qualified is Vice President President Kamala Harris.
You mentioned uh, Joe Manchin. I can now confirm that. And it was said apparently on ABC, the great Donna Brazil, our good sister, former head of the DNC. Uh, she has confirmed that she did get a call from Senator Joe Manchin uh, to inquire about the nomination. I will note for our audience, of course, that he did leave the Democratic Party. So it's not clear how he would do that. But she did remind him uh, that she would you would actually have to be a Democrat to do that. So she uh, said and she's not sure what he was thinking, but he did he did make that inquiry. Uh, let, let's just talk about uh, because you've been one of the members who's been very clear um, that the, the push to get Joe Biden to stand down uh, was not something that, that, you know, your constituents were in support of. I know I, that we were both in New Orleans. and I think we both spoke to a lot of civilians, of black voters who were very angry about it. And I think you agreed with some of them in some ways. What do you make of how this process played out? And are you confident um, that there is no way to stand in the way of Vice President Harris being the nominee. It seems like she's getting all these state party endorsements. I am I am not confident. I will be working and working and working. As you mentioned, there was the other call with win with black women, which is actually still going on right now. Um, I have been in touch with those delegates that have pledged themselves to President Biden in my district. Um, we are in the process of contacting all of the Texas delegation. Um, I am not confident at all because, as it was laid out earlier, I do know that, you know, behind closed doors, while I won't name names, that there were people that were absolutely like it can't be the vice president. So in one breath, they were saying, you know, the president needs to be out. In the next breath, they were also saying it can't be her. And so it was one of the reasons that I was very fearful that we would end up falling into this trap of chaos, which, you know, we have done a really good job in the House of making it clear that the chaotic party is the Republicans, as we've watched them um, perform as straight up clowns this entire, you know, year and a half. So the fact that we would eat our own was really disappointing, especially since I know that it wouldn't be kind of this smooth transition over to the other person that is on the ticket, which is the vice president. Um, but nevertheless, everybody knows that I was doing everything that I could for, for the president. I'm going to do everything that I can for the vice president. I was just in Phoenix with the second gentleman where we were campaigning. Um, I have gone around this country. I've been to Philly, I think, four times. I've been to Michigan. So a lot of the people that were coming coming out and had all these opinions, I hadn't seen them in the streets fighting for this. So now that they got their way, my only request is, will you finally lace up your shoes and do some work? Um, you know, if, if it was the president that was the problem, then fine, get to work. But we have to win. I mean, I appreciate you, Joy, at all times. You know, you probably were one of the very first people to ever bring up Project 2025. You have always made it clear that there really wasn't a decision to make. I mean, is democracy or a dictatorship? right? It's a family man or a felon. Like, you made, like, the choice very clear, but seemingly some people were struggling with that, and, you know, I can tell you that I know this vice president. I know her heart. Um, the fact that I did get a phone call from her, I'm just a freshman member of Congress, y'all. Um, but it tells you the type of person that she is, and I can't really say that I know for sure that I would be here today without the inspiration of Kamala Harris, which I was able to to share with her soon upon me being sworn in, the fact that as a young black female lawyer, I looked to her when she first became an elected prosecutor um, in the Bay Area, and I've been following her career the entire time. So I look forward to this fight, but if anybody thinks this is going to be easy, it's not, and we need all hands on deck. Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett, uh, thank you. As somebody who, when I first got my, uh, my uh, the readout, Kamala, the Vice President Kamala Harris was one of the kind people who reached out. She's one of those people. So I think people are going to get to know who she is. There's going to be a lot of attention around her coming up. And I think that people will find out uh, the, the, the lovely person that she is. And I think people will be very interested to hear her thoughts on Donald Trump. I certainly would like to see that debate. I think people <laughs> might even want to see that on pay-per-view and pay money for it because that's going to be epic. Congresswoman, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Um, don't pay Thank, for you. You. Hey, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Sending it back to you. <laughs>
All right. You, you can know, sell tickets to it, Rachel. Us. People are going to want to yeah. see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I mean, I don't know what they're going to do about the debate. Donald Trump is already, like, complaining that this is somehow, against, the, the Republicans are complaining that this is somehow against the rules and this is unfair. Donald Trump was posting online that this is totally not cool. because he, they just did a whole convention that was about running against somebody different. Wait a second. Like, they want a do-over. Any time that that is, um, anytime that that is the character of, of what's happening in your opponent's camp, you know that you have made a wise decision, <laughs> uh, at least strategically speaking. I